see who all else is going. Oh. Okay, we have one minute before the bell. Who's recording? Okay, so we can start. Um, Dr. Allman, you can. Okay. Begin. Well, good morning. Today is Saturday, November 6th. 2021. My name is Lucy Altman. I will be a moderator for this class. Uh, please continue to mute yourselves and your monitor your video so as not to disturb the speakers or participants. Uh, welcome to this Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international honest-hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kenley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in the United States, Canada, Bahamas, Jamaica, England, Zambia, Malaysia, Ghana, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8, 5, that there are lords and gods many, but we now know that each lord must have a name and each god must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike lord and god, Elohim is a title, is, I'm sorry, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and his Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. 
In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the selfsame spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title, Elohim, may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also, in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle vision tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in men. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby men must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. This morning we will have a uh, uh, prayer by Dr. Felicia Smith, um, our song by Dr. Phyllis McCoy, and our scripture reading. Um, I'm not sure what that is yet. What is the scripture reading this morning? 
Revelation chapter 14, starting at uh, the 13th verse. And we'll ask Dr. Um, Dr. Dennis Pratt, if he would read that for us today. Thank you. Did I sound muffled? Oh, gotta stop that. Let's see. Our prayer, please, Dr. Smith. Good morning, class. Let us all by our hearts and minds in a moment of prayer. Yahweh, we thank you through Yahshua the Messiah, the Savior, that you've allowed us to just gather here today. We ask that you still our hearts and our minds and allow us to hear the words of life. Allow us, Father, to listen to what it is that you have to say to us. Allow us to be as you would have us to be, to go about to preach the gospel of Yahshua and Messiah in truth and reality. For anyone who is going through things, we ask, Father, that you would just let them know that they are not alone, that they have a comforter, they have a teacher who is there within them. These and other blessings I ask in the Son's name, Yahshua and Messiah, let us all say hallelujah. 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 This, hallelujah. This song is safe in his arms. Come on. Because Yahshua is my shepherd, I have everything I all right. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass, and he leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing health, and he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm saved. That's why I'm saying, that's why I'm saying, say in his arms. Because Yeshua is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass and he leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing health and he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. Safe in his arms. When the storm. When the storm. When the storm of life is raging, and the billows and the billows and the billows roll, oh, they begin to roar, and I'm I'm glad, I'm so glad, glad. I'm oh, sorry. He shall, he shall, he, he shall hide me. Hallelujah. Sorry for the mistake. Hallelujah. That's beautiful. That was awesome. Awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was beautiful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
<laughs> mm. Good day, family. I'll be reading Revelations chapter 14, starting with verse 13 out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association Incorporated, reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. Revelations chapter 14, verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessed are the dead which die in the Messiah from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. And I looked and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud voice, cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy, thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it onto the great winepress of the wrath of Yahweh. And the winepress was trodden outside the city and blood came out of the winepress, even onto the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. My reading Revelation 15. Okay, that was Revelations 14, verse, uh, that was verse uh, 14 through, uh, to the end of Revelations 14th chapter. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Dr. Pratt. Thank you to all of our participants, and I turn this back over to Dr. Lenore Allen, and the readers for today will be Dr. Phyllis McCoy and myself. Dr. Lenore. Good morning. This is Revelation Saturday, and we turn this over to Dr. Frank Lewis of Springfield, Ohio, and his lovely wife, Valerie Lewis. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, we're always thankful and glad to be in class and uh, this beautiful teaching, which Yahweh, our Elohim through Yahshua Messiah has given us at the end of this age. And uh, we had another great week of, uh, uh, we read our, we always start off the week with Dr. Kimley uh, transcript, and these were from 1958 and it was probably one of the shortest ones of the lectures, and it took us two days to go over it <laughs> because there's so much in the vision of Revelation and the things that he taught. Uh, the Holy Spirit showed him. Um, and then we had, uh, I mean, we did from ex, uh, Genesis 39 to 42 this week, I think, something like that. Mm -hmm. And we had many ministers that expounded on the gospel of Yahshua Messiah and uh, brought out many great things which are too numerous to mention and we appreciate them and what their testimonies um, last week we uh, 
we went into Revelation 14, 12, and we kind of just broke down that uh, the word saint is really something the Roman Catholic Church put in there, and it's really sons. And we proved that, and we did 14, 13, uh, and uh, this 14, 12, and 13 are where a lot of the Sabbath keepers and people that keep the law, uh, that's where, where their last scriptures they get because it says they that keep the commandments of Yahweh, but they don't find out that the rest of it and the faith of Yahshua, uh, you got, you got to have, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and they'll say that that means keeping the 10 commandments and the laws of, uh, of the old Testament. And they believe in, in, well, they use most of them say Jesus, but uh, the next verse is what we read in the scripture lesson. And we always want to emphasize it's a school and not a church. And it came by way of a divine vision revelation. And we try to explain these things to make it simple. And we do have a, uh, a brother. We have newer people. And, uh, and uh, welcome back, Kevin uh, from Baltimore, Kevin Baxter. And um, also Michael Aarons and whoever else. Uh, and so, um, so uh, that's why we're able to talk about the things in Revelation is because Dr. Kinley had a vision and revelation, and we're also products of that vision revelation. And so he's taught us this, and what we have to do, or what we do, is we're in the book of Revelation, but we really have to go back to uh, the law, which is the first five books of the Bible, the uh, prophets which is the next 34 books of the bible and then show yahshua in his fulfillment which is matthew mark luke and john that's when he's in a natural body fulfilling the things the old covenant then he dies buries resurrects uh, sins pours out the holy spirit and that's the age that we live in and you're now supposed to worship him in spirit and in truth by the holy spirit which is yahshua the messiah and so he heard a voice from heaven. And so here's John saying, I heard a voice from heaven. And really, that's what you want to do is hear the voice from heaven, which is Joshua, the Messiah. That's where he lives. And hopefully he resurrects in you. And um, when he does, then um, that's what will save your soul. Mm -hmm. And so this 13th verse, uh, let's read that and we'll try to get through it. Verse 13, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, write, blessed are the dead which die in the, in the Messiah from henceforth. Yea, saith the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Okay. Um, so. It says he heard, uh, I heard a voice from heaven. And there's even a lecture where Dr. Kinley had the lecture on, I heard a voice from heaven. But uh, I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Messiah from henceforth, or in Yahshua, see. Now, how can the dead die and be blessed? You know, we don't understand that. A lot of us don't even understand death, period. Until you come to this school, that's when you can really understand what death is. When this school, we understand that, uh, and then it says, yea, it has a colon there, yea, saith the spirit, uh, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Okay, so um, I think since we do have newer people, we're going to try to talk about death and uh, show that what is the dead which die in the Messiah from henceforth? Uh, <clears throat> uh, and there's a lecture also that Dr. Kinley talked about. Uh, he said, you have to die to go to heaven. And he says, I don't mean die and go to the cemetery and then go to heaven later. It means that that depraved mind that you have, that's uh, being carnal minded and not knowing Yahweh, that's spiritual death. And you need that needs to die so that you can resurrect uh, so that the Holy Spirit can resurrect you, because that's the resurrection and the life. And then um, you've been raised from the dead. And that's why you're still walking around in a physical body. And that's hard for somebody to see that. But uh, we're going to try to go through the Bible and 
uh, hopefully explain it. Well, the first man that was made was Adam in Genesis 2, 16 and 17. And it says, uh, oh no, in 2 and 7 of Genesis. Um, Genesis 2 and 7. And Yahweh Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So he formed man from the dust of the ground um, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul. So man is made up of spirit, soul, and body. Okay, and she has this 40 plate chart there and there's plate 11. It's on the sixth day. And you see that it says, it says when he put in the breath of life, you see right over top there, Dr. Kinley has Yahshua breathed on his disciples. See, because, and he breathed on his disciples and said, receive ye the Holy Spirit in John 20, 22, to show that that was the, it was a spirit body, that it was a spirit man, well, that formed the physical man and got in him, and that's, that's his breath of life. Or that's, in other words, man is made up of spirit, soul, body. And he, so he's a living soul. And then he placed him into the garden. See, so, and then he gives him a commandment in Genesis 2, 16 and 17. Genesis 2, 16. And Yahweh Elohim commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt die the death, or surely die. Okay, so that's a commandment. Now, that's the first commandment he gives Adam. Uh, it says, well, it says, and, and Yahweh Elohim, so it said he formed him from the dust of the ground, breathed his nostril by the life, he became a living soul in 2 and 7. Then in 2 and 16, it says, uh, so man's made up of spirit, soul, body. And a lot of us don't know much about this. Before we come into class, we hardly know nothing about spirit or soul, really. And uh, we don't even know that much about our bodies. So, how <laughs> so we came to school, we learned those things. Well, um, uh, okay. And so uh, you see that, oh, she had this next plate. Uh, uh, Which one do you want? No, no, you're right there. It's fine. So what happened was um, uh, he gives him that commandment. And the first commandment that he uh, uh, gives him is, he says, and Yahweh I'm commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, you can freely eat. But a tree of knowledge, good and evil, don't eat for the day you do, you'll surely die. Why does he mention death first thing to Adam? Because he's a pattern. And in the pattern, that's the first step of the pattern or the first vessel of the pattern is concerning death, okay? And then you'll find out that he laid Adam down into a deep sleep. That's likened unto a death, see? And then went into his side, took the rib and the womb and made the woman. And then, and then the man resurrected <laughs> and, and, and there's his wife. You understand? And then he, they're placed in the garden. Uh, might as well do the uh, elementary chart there. See? Uh, and, the, and we have them. And so uh, you read in Genesis, the third chapter, that the devil come unto the woman and said, um, uh, what did Yahweh Elohim say? And she said, well, he told us that we could eat of all the trees of the garden, but the tree that's in the midst of the garden, we shall not eat or touch thereof, for in the day we do, we'll surely die. He said, you won't surely die, go ahead and eat. And so she was deceived. She ate and then gave her husband, he did eat. And they died in their conscience or soul that day instantaneously. Because Yahweh's spirit, so the death he's talking about is a spiritual death. And so you'll find out that uh, they died in their conscience or soul 
but they're still alive physically. And so they live for 930 years, or Adam lives 930 years, walking around physically, but is dead spiritually. Um, how do you know that? Read Romans 5 and 12. Might as well get the dispensation and ages there. And I think we we did some of this last week. Uh, uh, yeah, Romans 5 and 12. Romans 5, 12. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Now you see that? See, when sin is the transgression of law. So when Adam died, it says, wherefore is by one man sin entered in the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. So uh, uh, that's a spiritual death passed upon all men and man, but man is physically alive, walking around. Well, Yahweh's going to remedy that situation. Um, let's just go. Uh, we did this last week, so we'll just do it a little bit to, uh, again. This well. Hmm. Oh, oh! Before before you move on, um, I have a question. Um, so when you uh, was talking about uh, in the deep sleep, you have okay. So the deep sleep at the, by the pattern, that's the death. And then you said, so was the was the uh, burial, um, Eve being in the womb, I mean, um, Eve being in um, Adam, is that the burial? Uh, yeah, that's what it said. Yeah, it says okay, the woman was immersed in the man, and then he resurrects. Now, yeah, that, what the, that is, that's and him the dying. Hold uh -huh. on. That's him dying without sin. See, okay, get the Moses chart, too. Uh, see what has to happen is Yahweh made one man so when he formed him from the dust of the ground breathed his nostril breath of life he became a living soul mm -hmm. that's likened unto Yahweh being pure spirit and him taking on shape and form as Yahweh Elohim that's mm -hmm. a crucifixion of the lamb slain before the foundation of the world and that's him dying without sin mm -hmm. you see Mm -hmm. So then it's fulfilled by Yahshua the Messiah that he's without sin. You understand? And right. didn't uh did Yahweh go into his uh, didn't he die? And right. didn't they go into his side? Right. Just like Adam went down to a deep sleep, that's like in a death, and didn't they go into his side? Right. And then okay. it wasn't he buried. Yes. Then when he resurrects, the first person he sees is a woman. Mm -hmm. Right. That's why when Adam come forth, the first thing he sees is a woman. His wife. Right. You understand to come out of his side. So okay. when the woman, so you understand. So that's like a he's alive. Then Adam dies without sin, and Yahweh goes on the side, takes the rib and the womb, and makes the woman, and then the, his bride is resurrected. You know, he he he. In other words, he meets his wife <laughs> and the, so, so Yahshua so says the scriptures testify of me uh -huh. so it, it's showing that he's gonna die without sin mm -hmm. and they're gonna pierce him to take away the sin of the world he's gonna be pierced in the side just like Adam was pierced in the side when he went into the deep sleep and then when Adam resurrects there's the wife and she's not a sinful woman when he resurrects and appears to Mary Magdalene, that's why he cast out the seven demons out of Mary Magdalene, because he's not going to appear to a sinful woman to fulfill that Adam, Eve, wasn't a sinful woman when she got out of Adam. Okay, I got it. Now, one more question. So um, when they were placed in the garden, that was the resurrection, right? Because because well, you said yeah, I mean that's where it ha I mean uh, because yeah it, I mean yeah that, it, well it's like an ascension because the resurrection when he when he resurrects with his wife just like he resurrected then later on didn't Yahshua ascend 
See, that's yes. what most Moy places like into Ascension, okay? Right, okay. Right. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, yeah, that's the Ascension because that's the most holy place. Okay. Okay, so yeah, I just wanted to get the wording right. The death, burial, resurrection, and, and Ascension. Okay, so I got it. Adam and Eve. Um, okay. That's it, I'm good. All right, thank you. So thank you. Uh, the point that we got is the... Uh, <laughs> is that uh, he's given a commandment of every tree of the garden you freely eat, but a tree of knowledge, good and evil, don't eat for the day you surely die. Um, just go to the tabernacle since we have new people too. Uh, you know, the human body tabernacle. We're going to kind of switch back and forth a little bit. See, the tabernacle has a most holy place, holy place, court roundabout. Three compartments, one tabernacle. It's testifying how that man is made up of spirit, soul, body. The most holy place is representing Yahweh. The holy place is representing Elohim, and the and the court roundabouts represent Yahshua. But it's also representing most holy place representing your soul. I mean spirit. The holy place representing your soul, and then the uh, court roundabout is representing your physical body. Now there's so there's everything's three parts. Showing the Father, Word, Holy Spirit. These three are one. Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, these three are one, the unity of the spirit. Man has a head cavity, chest cavity, abdominal cavity. That's the physical body, which you're made up of spirit, soul, and your inside of a, and your body surrounds it. See? Okay, there's seven steps of the pattern. The uh, first step is the gate. The second step is the altar. The third step is the labor. The fourth step is the door. The fifth step is the holy place. The sixth step is the second veil that divides between the most holy place and holy place, and the seven steps the most holy place. So this first step is the all is the is the gate. Uh, that's an entrance way into the court roundabout. So go to the dispensation and ages there. So the first age is the creative age that's the angelic and the physical creation that's an entrance way into Yahweh's purpose he creates the angelic and the physical and has a purpose behind it okay back to the pattern back to the pattern, back to the pattern. we're going to go back and forth okay the second step's the altar that's death see that's the first vessel that he comes to see but it's the second step of the pattern dispensation and ages didn't he command adam first thing a very tree of the garden you freely eat but a tree of knowledge good and evil from the day that you do you'll surely die that's the first dispensation like the first vessel and the second age is the antiluvian age the second step of the pattern and it says age of conscience it became a he became carnal minded it says in adam all die see so they died in adam that's the that's a death principle there all right, and that's what we're trying to get here. That when she ate and gave her husband, he did ate, ate, eat, they died in their conscience or soul. And Adam lived 930 years and he died. So he's dead spiritually, but he's living 930 years physically. And you say, well, how does that happen that you live? Uh, okay, well, let's go to the prophets real quick. Get a... Uh, uh, Proverbs 835 and other person get uh, Proverbs 1821. We're trying to run how that what how you uh, how can bless right he says I heard a voice from heaven blessed are they that are uh, well anyway we'll get it there in a minute uh, read the Proverbs 835 Proverbs 8.35, mm -hmm. for whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of Yahweh. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. All them that hate Yahweh love death. See, so when you don't want to love Yahweh, you love death. You understand? And if you hate him, you love death. Uh, uh, but he says, um, okay, get Proverbs 18. Uh, and you got to be living to, to hate him. 
You understand? So you're living physically, but you're hating him, and that's spiritual death. <laughs> Do you have um, uh, 1821? Proverbs 18 and 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now, death and life are in the power of the tongue. So, you know, you can be speak. somebody can be speaking death to you. That's a lie. See, it was a lie that the devil told her. You won't surely die. Go ahead and eat. She believed the lie, ate the fruit, and she died in her conscience mm -hmm. instantaneously. And he died because you always said the day you love, you'll surely die. Yahweh's spirit. So what kind of death was it? It was a spiritual death, but then it was reflected 930 years by his physical death. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it says death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And you know, people do love, they either love lies or you love the truth. If you love the truth, um, that's life unto your soul. But if you eat lies or believe lies, that's death unto your soul. See? Okay. Excuse me. So that would be like the itching ears. They they love the they love a lie. Well, it's what it's it's kind of like okay. Uh, death and life from the power of the tongue. People are preaching things to you. Mm. Okay? So, before you know the truth, you might love what a lying preacher is preaching to you because you don't know any better. You might love you Christmas. Okay? So, that's death unto you because you don't know that you're dead. That's the whole point. Right. That's what we're going to try to get. Okay. So let's just, just trying to get a little start here with it. And we'll, let's, uh, and so that's really what happens when you come to this class. It's the first time, you know, the first day of the school is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Did we know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he actually is and really exists when we came into class? No, we didn't. No, we were dead. Uh, I don't know if that's Yvonne or something, the noise. No, it needs to mute that. Okay. Um, so, uh, so read Proverbs. I mean, let's do it this way. Get 1 Timothy 5 and 6 and then read uh, uh, Matthew 8, 21 and 22. 1 Timothy 5 and 6. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. So it says a woman that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. How is that? Because you're, you're pleasing yourself with the physical. And you're not seeing and not living by the spirit or by the Holy Spirit. So you're dead while you're living. You understand? And it isn't just a woman. It's not, somebody doesn't have the Holy Spirit. And that's really what we were before we came in the class. Yeah. We were living physically, but we didn't know. See, John 17 and 3, it says, and this is life eternal, that they might know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yahshua Messiah, whom thou hast sent. Most of us never even heard about Yahweh, Elohim, and we didn't understand anything about him, and we sure didn't know Yahshua. All we ever heard was Jesus. So if eternal life's to know, and we didn't know, then we were dead when we first come in the class because life is to know and we didn't know. So that shows that we were dead and we were living in pleasure and we were dead while we were living physically. We were spiritually dead, but we were living physically. What this teaching, he can, okay, now get, um, um, well, you might as well get to, well, Get Rome, yeah. Read the uh, Matthew eighteen. I mean, eight twenty one and twenty two. Matthew eight twenty one, and another of his disciples said unto him, Rabbi, permit me to first go and bury my father. But Yahshua said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. Now he oh, so no. this man wants to wants to let me go bury my father. And he said, well, let the dead bury their dead. Follow me. 
And you would say, uh, well, how can the dead bury the dead? Well, they have physical dead and they were spiritual dead burying their physical dead. That's the dead burying the dead. Okay. Um, get Matthew 16 and 24. Matthew 16, 24. Then said Yahshua unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his yoke and follow me. Yeah, take up. Uh, and the, I think uh, uh, now that's, that's the holy name. The King James will say take up his cross, which is death. In other words, you got to deny yourself and you got to die, die, uh, die to yourself or the carnal man, mind has to die. You really get that, Romans 8 and 6. And take up his cross and fall. No, keep reading this though. Keep reading this. And then we'll get back to that. Verse 25, for whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. And whosoever well, wait a minute. How can you save your life and lose it? Because you saved your life, well, how do you lose it? Well, you're saving your life because you're so consumed with the physical that you lose your spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Read on. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And whosoever lose his life for my sake, that means you die, you shall find it. You're losing your life for his sake. That means you die, but you're going to find eternal life because there's a life after death. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, boy. You might as well read the next part. Verse 26. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Might as well finish up. <laughs> For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Okay, Verily, now you see. I say unto you, there shall be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. That's right. So now look at that. It says, uh, for what man profit if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So what does it profit if you gain all the physical? Because you're carnal minded and that's all you want to look at is the physical. But you lose your soul. Your soul be damned. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? See, and then, and then he says, the son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels. Then shall he reward every man according to his works. Mm -hmm. And see, there was works in that verse we had in Revelation. We're just doing, dealing with the death right now. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom. And you know, almost before you come in this class, if you, people ask you, has the kingdom come yet? You'd say no. Uh, matter of fact, that was one of the major prayers we prayed was Matthew, the Lord's Prayer, they called it. And it yeah. says, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You're saying hallowed be thy name, and you didn't know his name. They weren't telling you Yahweh was his name. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they say, our Father which art in heaven, so you're thinking up there in the sky somewhere. And then it says, thy kingdom come. And people are praying that prayer today. Yesterday, they had a funeral for Colin Powell. And that, that's what the guy had that pray at the end there, was the Lord's prayer there about the kingdom coming. But he said 1,900 years ago, there's some standing here which will not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So if the kingdom hadn't come yet, there should be 2,000 year old men walking around. See that? Because they're so, you know, so the kingdom must have come. Okay. Now I, get. Can I ask a question here? Okay. I was wondering if you could address the difference in the two verses there with the holy name and the King James with verse 28. One says, till they see a vision of the Son of Man's coming kingdom and glory in the Holy yeah. Name. Yeah. yeah. 
um, well, the next chapter is when he gives them the vision in, in, in Matthew 17. You understand? That's when he gives the transfiguration and gives the vision. You understand? And I'd say that's why he put that in there. I see. Uh, okay. You understand? Yes. Because he doesn't believe the kingdom's come either. Right. <laughs> you understand? It's an understanding. He's still waiting. That's uh -huh. right. Okay. Uh, see, and that's why, get the dispensation ages too, please. Okay, also get John uh, 11 and 25. Uh, so here, uh, okay, so we, what we see is, um, uh, so we, we went to the pattern and we showed that the first step of the pattern is a gate, which is an entranceway. So Yahweh has a creative age on the first age. He has the age, he creates the angelic and the physical creation and has a purpose behind it. That's an entranceway to his purpose. Second step of the pattern is the altar, which represents death. The second age and Adam all died. So that's a death age, okay? But what do you do with a dead man? You bury him, okay? So they were buried in condemnation, see, or sin, more or less. And Yahweh set up a flood to bury mankind with. Uh, you understand? You're dead. So then that flood is a burial. But what happened was there were people that were saved by a vision. Of, well, Noah was given a vision that to get an ark. So there was a way of, 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 of resurrecting from that uh, flood uh, that was going to come on earth. So that ark resurrected, ascended, and come on over. Okay. Then the third, go back, go to the pattern there. You like the red background, huh? So the, th the third step of the pattern is the labor, and that's water. That's a burial with the sacrifices. Go back to the, uh, uh, yeah. So this third age, the flood come, that's a burial. Then uh, Pharaoh and his host were buried in the Red Sea uh, at the beginning of the fourth dispensation. Then mankind was buried in carnal ordinances. Then John the Baptist is burying the dead Jews. All that's in water, ain't it? With the third uh, age there. So that's a death and a burial. Well, you, Yash Messiah came to resurrect man. See? And so... Um, okay, and that, um, oh, I, I probably should have read that, or anyway, uh, anyway, we'll do, uh, get John eleven twenty five. John eleven twenty five. 25. Yashua and I'll said, say this, this is what happened here. This is when Lazarus died, he's been dead for four days, okay? And then Yahshua's going to resurrect him, and he's uh, talking to his uh, Sister there, read on. Uh, okay. 11 and 25 of John there. 11 and 25. Yahshua said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Now, all those people that died from the fall of Adam, see, they were, uh, they, uh, you know, you had Adam, well, all of them died. That's for 4,033 years. He says, uh, I'm the resurrection and the life. Uh, any man believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And when he uh, resurrected, there were souls that resurrected with him after his resurrection. And so he resurrected Lazarus being dead for four days to represent that when he dies, buries and resurrects, when he resurrects, he's going to resurrect man that had been dead for 4,000 years. In other words, they have, the only one that can resurrect them is the one that has life, which is Joshua the Messiah. He's the resurrection and the life. Okay. And that's who, and then after his, after he tarried 40 days making spiritual appearances, then he ascends. When he pours out the Holy Spirit, 
that's when he put life into man's mind and proved, it, it proved it, oh, get the other part of that. That's the next part. He says, uh, I'm the resurrection of life. He that mm -hmm. believed in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And they resurrect with him after his resurrection. Right. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall not die forever. Be believest thou this? Now he says, and he that liveth, and believeth in me shall not die. Believest thou this? Well, what are you talking about? Uh, uh, dispensation ages. We're talking about this age. See, this age is the age where you can live and believe in him and you'll never die. Does that mean you'll never die physically? Because right. if he meant you'll never die physically, then we should be seeing the Apostle Paul and Peter right. and all of them. And Dr. Kinley should have never, you understand? He should be here right now. It ain't talking about that you won't die physically. It means you won't receive eternal damnation. Um, okay. We're going <laughs> to, okay. There's a lot of stuff from opened up here. Uh, <clears throat> but it's important, I believe. Get uh, Romans 8 and 6. Romans 8 and 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now that's showing that, uh, it's really showing that if, well, when you first come into this school, eternal life is to know and you don't know. And really all the things we were taught before we were taught, um, well, we were lied to. Uh, you were told that the Savior's name is Jesus. You were told that you were supposed to be water baptized. You're supposed to eat Lord's suppers. You're supposed to keep the Sabbath. Well, those things were never given to you to do. So what happens is, and, and that really, those things are physical ways of worship. And he said the true worshipers worship in spirit and in truth but we were all worshiping physically and in a lie. Well, you were carnal minded and to be carnally minded is death. So even though you're physically alive, you're spiritually dead because you don't know the truth. See? And so, but it says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So what happens is the Holy Spirit can transform your mind and change your mind from being spiritually dead to being spiritually alive. And that's what we're preaching in this school. You're preaching life after death. You're preaching uh, that you can resurrect it. You can resurrect from being carnal minded. That's what the good news of the gospel is. Yash Messiah died. See, Adam died to bring sin into the world. And Yahshua died to take it out of the world. You understand? Uh, and you have to believe that to resurrect. Okay, let's do it this way. Uh, go back to the Romans. Okay, get Romans 5 and maybe read 15 there. Maybe. Romans 5 and 15. But not as, a, not, but not as the offense so also is the free gift. For if thou, if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of Yahweh and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahshua the Messiah. Okay, so that, so that, oh, is, is that still, you're still doing that? Yeah, which is by one man, abounded uh -huh. unto many. Yeah. Unto many, so, yes. So that one, that offense was the offense of Adam. When Adam died, many be dead. How much more the grace of Yahweh by the gift of grace, which is by one man, Yahshua Messiah. Okay, read, uh, just read 17. Verse 17. For if by one man's offense, death reign by one, which more, much more, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Yahshua, the Messiah. Yeah, see, by that one man, that's Adam's offense, death reigned. Uh, Can we read 14? Read 12 and come down, yeah. 
Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. So you see how that from Adam, man was dead all the way up to the Messiah, see? Right. Uh, even over them that had not law, so that, that's the death passing upon all men. Man is carnal minded. They're without the Holy Spirit. That's what is death, really. <laughs> uh, no, go back to the, you're already, well, that's fine. So man is dead and buried all the way through there. See, uh, so just read 17 again, I guess. Verse 17, for if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Yahshua the Messiah. Read 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So you're made righteous through Yahshua Messiah. That's life. But the death was disobedience by the first man, Adam. So where Adam brought everything down into death, Yash was the resurrection and the life. He died to bring man, to give man life. See? Oh, uh, keep reading there. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Yahshua, the Messiah, our Savior. <laughs> That's right. Uh, now read six and one. What shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? By no means. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Read. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized unto Yahshua the Messiah were baptized unto his death. Therefore, now that us they're talking about that were baptized unto Yahshua, were baptized in his death, were those Jews that had to be baptized by John's baptism. Not talking about you being baptized today, being baptized in his death, because he's he's resurrected. So you can't be baptized into his death. He's already resurrected. Read on. Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death, that like as the Messiah was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. That's right. That means being resurrected from the dead. Read. Mm -hmm. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we should be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he now that you see how that you're supposed to be crucified with him? In other words, you're supposed to die. Mm -hmm. so that you can be resurrected by the spirit read on for he that is dead is freed from sin now if we be dead with the messiah we believe that we shall also live with him knowing that the messiah being raised from the dead dieth no more mm -hmm. death hath no more dominion over him for in that he died he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto Yahweh. That's right. Where are like, you about? I'm at about nine now. I'm at 11. Okay. Okay. Now we're at 11. Now he's going to bring us in. He was talking about the Jews earlier. 
because they were the ones that were under John's baptism. He's not talking about you, you doing it, uh, but read the next part now. Verse 11, likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. But now it alive. says likewise. They're talking about the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Just like that was back there with them. Now it's with you on this side. It said likewise uh, reckon yourselves to be mm -hmm. dead uh, with him, right? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. Be dead unto sin, but alive unto Yash Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. See, so you're dead. Okay, keep on. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it uh, in the lust thereof. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so what he's saying is that, that, that you have to die and it's the Messiah that resurrects in you or resurrects and gives you life spiritually, okay? In other words, there's a, you gotta be born again. <laughs> and that's what we say in this school. If you're born once, you're gonna die twice. And what do you mean? Well, we were all born physically. You will die physically, and the second death's the lake of fire. But it says if you're born twice, then you'll die once. Uh, why do you mean born twice? You were born physically, and now if you're born of the spirit, that means you're born again. That means you have life. You're resurrected unto eternal life by the Holy Spirit. See? And you will die physically, or you'll leave this physical body sometime. But you, the second death will have no power over you, which is the lake of fire. And that's all that's in the Bible. Okay, let's move on. Get Ephesians 2 and 1. Um, read Galatians 2 and 19. Ephesians 2 and 1. And you has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein in times past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So it says, and you hath he quickened, you hath he resurrected, who were dead in trespass and sin. So you see how he raised you from the dead? It changes your mind when the Holy Spirit preaches the gospel and, and or you you receive the gospel, you hear the gospel. And really what happens is your old man dies off and you got a new man or you've been resurrected from the dead, your soul. OK, where in time past, you walked according to the course this world. We were all wrong at one time. We were dead according to the spiritually dead, physically alive. Uh, according to the prince of the power there, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. There was a time when you didn't have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so you were dead and buried in that. Okay. Um, all right, let's go. I, I, I want to try to get a little further this week. <laughs> uh, we'll read the fifth verse. The fifth verse? Mm -hmm. Ephesians 2, 5. Even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with the Messiah. By grace are ye saved. That's right. See, uh, so uh, even when you were dead in sin, see how you were dead? Hath he quickened us together with the Messiah? By grace you are saved. That means you've been resurrected from the dead. See, <clears throat> read on. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Yahshua the Messiah. See, he resurrected us up together and made us sit in heavenly places in the Messiah. Did you know you were sitting in heaven? If you have the Holy Spirit? <laughs> See, people think that's a geographical location that you do after you die. You go to heaven. See how you, hmm, there's a lot to learn. Read uh, seventh verse. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Yahshua the Messiah. For by yeah. grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of Yahweh. Right. For, keep on. Not of works, lest any man should boast. 
For we are his workmanship created in Yahshua the Messiah unto good works, which Yahweh has before ordained that we should walk in them. So now uh, you're saved by grace through faith, not of yourselves. It's a gift of Yahweh, not of works. It's not the works that was under the old covenant, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Yahshua Messiah unto good works. There are works, <laughs> but they're good works. Preaching the gospel, trying to help somebody else out. Do you understand? And it said that in ages to come, he might show. See, that's why we go those dispensation ages are so important. Before you, before you would read that in the Bible, would you know what age you were in and how there were three ages to come? No. Do you understand? See, uh, that's how blessed we are. In other words, uh, we have something we can see and understand. Uh, that when Yash Messiah lived, he lived in a different age. See, when he died, buried, resurrected, that was a different age. See, when he's poured out the Holy Spirit, that's the age we live in now. See, and that's the resurrection. See, okay, oh boy, boy, boy. You got uh, Galatians 2 and... Well, let's do this since we're there kind of so far. Well, uh, go back to Revelation 14, 13, and then we'll... Uh, continue on with this a little bit. Revelation 14, 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessed are the dead which die in the Messiah from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Okay. So when you die, blessed are the dead which die in the Messiah from henceforth. Um, Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Okay, um, read Matthew. Well, let's do it this way. Uh, hmm. Since it talked about the works and rest, and we're going to still work with the res the being raised from the dead also. Uh, hmm. Get Habakkuk 1 and 5. Now, you do know that back there under the, I mean, uh, and we read it earlier, how that when Adam died, uh, death reigned from Adam unto Moses, even though all of them that had sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Uh, huh? Not sinned. Have not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, which was a figure of him that was to come. And so it talked about death reigning even over them that, I mean, uh, from Adam unto Moses. And then Yahweh gave the children of Israel, uh, go back to the dispensation ages. Uh, see, uh, man was dead from the fall of Adam. And then Yahweh, and, the, and the, that's when the carnal mind came in. Matter of fact, uh, that's what that conscience is. It's a condemned conscience. And what he did, since man is carnal minded, he gave them 613 laws and ordinances, which are carnal ordinances to go along with the carnal mind that they got from their father, father Adam. And to be carnally minded is death. So they had a lot of works under the law. OK, now get uh, Habakkuk 1 and 5. The other person get John 628. Habakkuk 1 and 5. Behold ye among the nations. Regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it were be told you. Now that's Yahshua Messiah coming in. See, that's prophesied of Yahshua Messiah. He said, I'm going to work a work in which you will no wise believe, though, though it be told to you. Well, Yahshua Messiah said he came to fulfill. People still don't believe it, do they? Hmm. So that was in working a work in which you'll no wise believe, though it be told to you. Okay, read John 6, 28. John 6, 28. Get the That's dispensation the ages while they're reading it, just because it's good to see where these things are being said when he's saying it. Uh, John 6, 28. Then said they unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of Elohim? Yahshua answered and said unto them, this is the work of Elohim that ye believe on him whom he has sent. So when he was walking around at the, 
in the post-Luvian age, they were under the Old Testament there. And he said, what shall, they asked him, what shall we do to do the works of Yahweh? And he said, this is the work that you believe on him whom he hath sent. Mm -hmm. And they didn't believe it. You understand? Matter of fact, they crucified him. But it was all, you know, we understand that they had to do it. Uh, why? Um, well, they asked what to do to do the works. He said, believe on him whom he has sent. So that's the work of Yahweh. See, that you believe on him. See, and that's what we do. And matter of fact, you might as well get that too. Okay. Get Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. And the other one, get John 14, and we'll start at 10. Matthew 11 and 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So you see, Yahshua said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, because they were, they were laboring under the law. And I will give you rest. He's the one that's going to give you the Sabbath. And that rest is eternal rest. Keep going. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. See, for if my you come and learn of him, you'll find rest unto your soul. That's eternal life. That's eternal rest. You understand? See, read on. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, them 630, 13 laws and ordinances, was that easy? and Was that light? No. No, but by believing him and seeing that he's your salvation and you believe that he finished the work and that, that it was never given to you in the first place, all them works, you understand? Uh, and by somebody telling you to do those things on this side of the cross, they're calling him a liar saying he didn't fulfill it. Well, that's death. That's not life. So you come and learn of him and he'll give you rest into your soul. That's eternal life, see. Okay, uh, what, what did I call some? Oh, yeah. Ross for John 14, 10. Yeah, let's read that. John 14 and 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Say, he's the one doing the works. Read on. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. And you know what? The, 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 most people don't look at the, the, that that's the Father in a body. But he's out there saying, Father in me, and he's the one doing the works. And so when you say he didn't do the works, then you're calling him a liar and the Father a liar. That's a serious thing. You ain't going to get eternal life calling the Father and the Son a liar. Read on. Verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And that's le and like Dr. Kinley said, well, what's a greater work than raising a man at being dead after four days? Yeah. Well, it's preaching the gospel unto a soul and somebody receiving the Holy Spirit and their soul is saved throughout eternity and they're going to receive an immortal glorified body at the universal revelation. That's a greater work. You understand? See, and that's why we read earlier, was a prophet man if he gained the whole world? See, well, you get a physical healing, but you lose your soul. You understand? Was, that, was it worth it? To live the physical life for a little bit and have your soul damned throughout eternity? Mm -mm. It's worth trying to investigate and learn. You understand? So he says, uh, and greater works than these will you do. And so the greater work is uh, believing on him and receiving eternal life. See? Okay, let's go now to Galatians 2.16. Now, so he finished the work. When he's on the cross, he said, it is finished. We had brother go through that yesterday. Beautiful. Uh, 
And that's right. He did. He finished the work and he nailed those things to the cross. And that was the work that he would work in which they would no wise believe, though he declared unto him. People still don't believe it, do they? The devil's up there telling you to be water baptized. So you're saying he didn't fulfill it. Right. Telling you to pay tithes and offerings. Telling you he didn't nail it to the cross. He paid, his, paid the price with his blood. You understand? All those things. If I got to pay money, be saved. Why'd he die? Yeah. Okay, read 16 there. Know that Galatians 2.16, know that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Yahshua the Messiah, even as we have believed in Yahshua the Messiah, that we might be justified by the faith of the Messiah and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. They say you can't be saved by doing them works. See why? Because the Messiah already did the work. You right. understand? See, okay. Uh, read nineteen, just because we got to kind of. For I, for I through the law am dead to the penal law, penal law. That no, I don't be adding that stuff. He adds that stuff in there. Okay. Because he for... he still believes. That's why he puts ceremonial, sacrificial. It's the law. Period. Means okay, the law me... that was given to Israel with carnal ordinances. Got it. On. For I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live unto Yahweh. See, I, I... can be resurrected from that law of <laughs> sin and death. See, read on. I am crucified with the Messiah. Nevertheless, I live. Well, yeah, not you be, when you're crucified, you're dead. Yeah, I'm cruci I'm dead or crucified with the Messiah. Nevertheless, yeah. I live. Mm -hmm. Read on. Yeah. Yet not I, but the Messiah liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of Yahweh, who loved me and gave himself for me. So you see where you've been? He's been resurrected now. See, he's living by the Holy Spirit in him. But he was dead before, see? And then he says, I do not frustrate the grace of Yahweh, for if righteousness come by the law, then the Messiah is dead in vain. Okay? <clears throat> um, wow. Okay, okay. Uh, read, Galatians, read Colossians 3 and 1. Colossians 3 and 1. If ye then be risen with the Messiah, seek those things which are above, where the Messiah sitteth on the right hand of Yahweh. Go ahead. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with the Messiah in Yahweh. Now you see that? So it said, if you be risen with the Messiah, seek those things which are above. Those are spiritual things, the knowledge and understanding your creator, where the Messiah sitteth on the right hand of, the, of Yahweh. Set your affection on things above, spiritual things, not on things on earth. Because when, when you set your affection on earthly things, you're carnal minded. Now, you do have to have earthly things. you got a physical body, but that don't have to be your God. You understand? Right. Uh, then it says, for you are dead. Well, how can he be writing to them? How can they read his letter if they're dead? <laughs> You're dead to the flesh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for you are dead and your life is hid with the Messiah in Yahweh. So you see where he said, blessed are the dead which die in Yahweh from henceforth. That's what we were reading in Revelation. So it ain't nothing new. You understand? The brothers were talking about that before John got that on the Isle of Patmos. See? Okay. Then read the next verse. Uh, verse four. Or read the uh, three when, and four. The dead, yeah, the dead. Colossians three and three. For ye are dead and your life is hid with the Messiah in Yahweh. When the Messiah who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Yeah, uh, so it says, for you are dead and your life is hid with the Messiah and Yahweh. When the Messiah, who is our life, that shall appear. That's at the universal revelation. 
then ye shall, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mm -hmm. And there's a lecture where Dr. Kelly taught that. And he said, uh, Yahshua Messiah ain't coming without me. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> because he's filled with the Holy Spirit. And just like Paul said, then shall you appear him also with him in glory. In other words, you're going to appear with him. Yeah. Uh, read Second uh, Thessalonians one and seven. Second Thessalonians one and seven, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. When Yahshua the Messiah shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh and that obey not the gospel of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of Yahweh and from the glory of his power. That's right. <laughs> so it says, and you are troubled, rest with us. Why do we rest? Because Yahshua did all the work. See, and this age of time that we're in is according to the pattern is the most holy place age and in the most holy place it, at the seventh step of the pattern don't you rest so until you are troubled you should be resting because Yahshua is your salvation and now you're being led by the holy spirit see and so now it's the holy spirit working through you so uh, boy there's a lot here I can't anyway <laughs> to you are troubled rest with us when Yahshua Messiah shall reveal from heaven his mighty angels and you can be one of them see because that's the transformation of the body that's what he's doing that's what's going to happen it's th this more well read 1 Corinthians 15 20 uh, well, read start at 19 First Corinthians 15. So it said he's going to take flaming, he's, going to, he's coming in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh and obey not the gospel of our Savior. That's why we preach the good news that there's life after death. And there's good news that if you're dead, you can be made alive. In other words, the Holy Spirit can raise you from the dead sitting in your seat. You can have your mind changed. See, and that's what this teaching did to us. It changed our minds. It raised us from the dead because before we come into class, we didn't know that we didn't know. And then when the Holy Spirit teaches you and you have uh, intercourse with the truth, you can be raised from the dead, see, and be born again and worship him in spirit and in truth. And you have salvation for your soul and you can receive eternal life now. Mm -hmm. with the mortal with the hope of a mortal glorification in new earth state okay uh oh boy first corinthians 15 and 19 okay if in this life only we have hope in the messiah we are of all men most miserable so if you only have life in this uh if you only have if 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 you only have uh if in this life only we have hope in the Messiah. That means the physical. We are all men most miserable. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're just going to die and then you could go to the lake. You understand? So you want to have hope to have eternal life through Yahshua the Messiah and receive an immortal glorified body. Read. But now is the Messiah risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in the Messiah shall all be made alive. Now that's it. So from the fall of Adam, we were dead. Uh, the man was dead spiritually and psychologically. But the Messiah come and paid the price for, for death and raised mankind by pouring out the Holy Spirit. Oh, you might as well get that. Okay, we that we 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 ended up with the burial. Get go back to the pattern there. Uh, 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 the fourth step there. So the fourth step is right there where the door is, and that's where the high priest was anointed at. See, 
to go into the holy place and to officiate in the tabernacle. He had to be anointed at the door. Okay. Now go the dispensation ages. And also that go back to the tabernacle. <laughs> uh, now see where the fourth step he's anointed at the door, but the third vessel is the anointing oil. So uh, it's representing a resurrection. That anointing oil is representing the spirit. And so that's where he's anointed at that fourth step, but it's the third uh, vessel, okay? And so uh, how the pattern testifies to Yahshua he kills the sacrifice. That's a death. There's a burial. There's a resurrection. And the gate is 30 feet long and the door is three feet wide. So that's a death, burial, resurrection of 33. It's all talking about Yahshua. Okay. Uh, now go to the dispensation ages there. So we have a... Uh, the death of Adam in the second age, you have the burial in the third age, then Savior dies, buries, resurrects, ascends, and when he pours out the Holy Spirit, that begins the fourth age. See where the high priest was anointed with the anointing oil? And it's the third age of time. So that anointing oil being anointed, that the high priest being anointed at the door of the tabernacle is testifying the Holy Spirit being poured out in this fourth age that we live in. And that's the resurrection from the dead. You can be raised from the dead by the Holy Spirit being poured out in your mind. You understand? So that's the, the dead dying henceforth in the Messiah. You're dead and your life's hid in the Messiah. Okay, hopefully we uh, more or less thoroughly proved that. Uh, uh, and you rest from your labors because he did all the work and now you're just being led by the spirit, see? <laughs> and you're saved by grace through faith and it's a gift of Yahweh, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay. Um, okay, let's go on and with the, uh, uh, <laughs> we're going to finish fourth chap 14th chapter, Yahweh willing. Well, let's do this. I, I got to uh, go to Revelation 20 and 1. Revelation 20 and 1. Mm -hmm. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a no. great. Okay. Yeah, almost when she was in that 15th chapter, I almost felt like staying there because there's some good stuff there too. But uh, hmm. okay. So he's uh, Moses chart, and she'll read this. Read now, please. Oh. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. Till now that changed uh, till the thousand years were finished. Mm -hmm. So that angel coming down from heaven is Yahweh coming down as uh, taking on shape and form as Elohim and coming into a physical body. And he came that first as Yahshua, the son of Nun, down there in Egypt. And he came down there, and Pharaoh and his host are representing the devil and his demons. And and uh and they resurrected out of Egypt through a death, burial, resurrection. And that day that he bound that devil for a thousand years is the day that he resurrected. Pharaoh was cast into the Red Sea. The day that the children of Israel resurrected, I'll say that. Then it was fulfilled by Yahshua Messiah. When he died, that's an angel coming down from heaven. That's the creator in a body. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, and he and he, he died for the sin. You might as well get that. Get, get, um, um, oh boy. Uh, Hebrews 2 and 9 and read 2.14. So Yash Messiah 
Adam died to bring sin to the world. Yahshua Messiah died to take it out. He, he, he was the sacrifice for the sin of the world. That lamb killed in Egypt was the, was to die for, to get them out of physical bondage. Yash Messiah is dying to get you out of spiritual bondage of death and sin. Yeah, he got you out of the sinning business. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, hold, oh, oh, oh. Okay, so he dies, he's buried, and when he resurrects, see, that's when he shut up the devil and them scribes and Pharisees. You understand? And they were bound a thousand years. That's the day he resurrected. See, keep reading. Did you want Hebrews? Yeah, go ahead and do that. Hebrews 2 and 9. But we see Yahshua, because of the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, having been made for a little while a little lower than the angels, so that by the grace of Yahweh, he should taste death for every man. He tasted death or he died for all men. So when Adam all died and Yahshua shall all be made alive, if you believe him, mm -hmm. uh, you don't believe him, you're still dead. See, if you don't believe the name Yahshua, you're still dead because you're, that's the only name. That's the only life name there is, is Yahshua Messiah. He's the resurrection of life. And the devil, that's why he tricks you and tells you with everything else to keep you dead and buried. Okay, you got 2.14 now. Hebrews 2.14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the adversary. So when he died, he, he destroyed the one that had the power of death, which is the devil. Read. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. See, you had fear of death and you were subject to bondage of death. Read on. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to Yahweh to make so reconciliation he, for the sins of the people. That's right. He died, buried, and he resurrected without sin. See? And so when he resurrected, there were 4,033 years of souls resurrected with him. See? Uh, when he resurrected. See? Keep reading back there. Verse 18. No, no, in, Revelation. Sorry. Oh, Revelation um, 20 and 4. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Revelation 20 and 4. Oh, uh, no, 20 and 3. And Just cast read. Him in, start with 4? Yes. Okay. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahshua and for the word of Yahweh and which had not worshiped but the beast, neither his idol or image, neither had received its mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with the Messiah a thousand years. Those thousand years. In 2 Peter 3 and 8, it says, One day with Yahweh, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with Yahweh is a thousand years, a thousand years, one day. That thousand years is the day he resurrected. That's when they're living and ruling with him in Jerusalem. And it said the souls of them that were beheaded. You see who resurrected? The souls. See, that's what he resurrected when he resurrected. That's the thousand years. It's one day. <laughs> the day he resurrected. Read on. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. The this... rest of the dead lived mm -hmm. not again. Who are they? Those are the disciples. They hadn't got the Holy Spirit yet. So that's the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. They had to wait 50 days after his resurrection to receive the Holy Spirit. That's when they received life. Mm -hmm. That's when they were resurrected by the Holy Spirit. That's when they were raised from the dead when the Holy Spirit comes in you and you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Read on. This is the first resurrection. 
He's calling the resurrection of those souls that resurrect with Yahshua and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This is the first resurrection. Read. Blessed and holy is that, is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they have, but they shall be. Now priests. that's it. The second death hath no power. That's why we say if you're born twice, you're going to die once because the second death hath no power on you. What's the second death? Read 2014. Well, you might as well read 20 and 12 now. 2012. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Yahweh. And the books were open. And another Now, book how was... is the dead going to stand before Yahweh? <laughs> read. Does the mm. dead stand? Mm. Read on. And another book yeah, was open. They do. There's a lot of cars. You see dead people standing all the time. We were standing before we come into class. We were dead, though. <laughs> Read. Which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. So and you're going to be judged according to your works. But if you receive the Holy Spirit, then he's working in you. You understand? But they're trying mm -hmm. to do works and calling him a liar, maybe mm -hmm. ignorantly or willfully. Read on. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And now what that's the second death, when death and hell is cast into the lake of fire. But if you're alive, you ain't the, the second death hath no part over you. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's what it said earlier there. So that's why we wanted to read all that so you could understand a little bit. Oh, get one more thing. Get Jude the 12th verse. Okay, let me read 15. And whosoever yeah. was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. How that's you... right. If you're not in the book of life, See, you're cast in the lake of fire and says, whosoever sins against me, him I'll blot out of the book which I've written. You get blotted out when you when you go against him. And your soul can be damned throughout eternity for that. And that's why after it's been told to you, you need to research and make sure it's true. When we tell you Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation any other. There's none other name under heaven given among men where a man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua Messiah. You need to research that. Make sure you know it for real. Because if you don't, you want to go on with Jesus, your soul will be damned for that. It's serious. No games here. Mm -hmm. See, uh, you got um, uh, Jude 12. Jude 12. These are spot, spots in your feast when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds, they are without water, carried about by winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Now, how can you be twice dead? <laughs> you understand? Right. Now, this twice dead, is uh well dispensation ages they were dead under the old covenant because that was the law of sin and death and the messiah hadn't come to resurrect them from that he's the resurrection the life so they were dead under the old covenant then when Yash Messiah fulfilled the old covenant, died, buried, resurrected, and poured out the Holy Spirit, if they didn't believe him, they were dead under that age. So they were twice dead. So what is it in this school? In this school, it's when you come to this class, you come to this class dead because you didn't know Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yash Messiah, as he really is and actually exists. And then if you haven't been resurrected by the Holy Spirit, you're twice dead. That's what it means. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I got all, 
all these things we got by divine vision revelation from Dr. Kidley. He preached so many great things. And so we repeat them things because it was so beautiful to us. We just, we, you know, that's the love is to share. Oh, you might as well get that. First John 3 and 14. We're going to finish up the death thing here. I mean, there's more to it, of course, but uh, we got to move on. Yeah. First John 3, 14. We know what we have passed. We know what, what we know that, pardon me. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and he said earlier there in 313, marvel not my brethren if the world hates you. Why? Because it hated him. <laughs> if he's getting you, he's going, they're going to hate you. Mm -hmm. We know that we have passed from death unto life. See, that's how you, you resurrected from the dead. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. Mm -hmm. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. And so mm -hmm. the thing come down to it is, and then the 16th, perceive, hereby perceive we the love of the Messiah because he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay our lives down for the brethren. What is that? You need you break it down and give somebody the same opportunity you have so you can be resurrected. If you know the truth, the love is, you'll tell it to somebody so their soul can be saved. You understand? Uh, because you uh, appreciate what the life that you've been given, uh, which is the truth about Yahshua and Messiah, and you want somebody else to experience that same life. You understand? And be resurrected in their heart and mind. That's so right. That's how you love them, by telling them the truth, if you know it. And that's what Dr. Kinley said. They asked him, well, how can I prove my love? He said, if I know the truth, I'll tell it to you. And that's what we, that's what we got to offer you here. And that's what we, that's what we're about. It's all you can eat truth down here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and knowledge. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and it, and it was said this week, and I, 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 I no, I, I, I believe that it is. There's nothing wrong with taking notes. You understand? So you, you, you should, because how else you going? You can't remember all these scriptures. You're gonna have to look them up and, right. and, and check it out for yourself. See. Right. Okay. Okay. Let's go get. Uh, let, now let's get down to fourteen, fourteen. Wow. Of Revelation. Oh. Revelation 14 and 14. And I looked and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Okay. Now just get the dispensation, I mean, get the elementary chart. When Yahshua Messiah died, buried, resurrected, he ascended on a cloud. And first of all, I mean, we do a lot of stuff in this school. Dr. Kinley said, you can't start at Genesis 1-1 because there ain't no cloud there. You understand? And how Genesis was written was after Moses' chart. After Yahshua Messiah's death, burial, resurrection, see, uh, there was a cloud that led them out of Egypt. You understand? And then that cloud sat upon Mount Sinai, and then this, Yahweh spoke the law down from that cloud. Well, also, it was in that cloud that Moses was up there in the mount seeing that vision of Yahweh Elohim was in the cloud. And he had, was up there 40 days and the cloud covered the glory of Yah, the, the, uh, the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it six days. He's having that vision there. And then he comes down out of that cloud. Then when the tabernacle's finished, Yahweh said in Leviticus 16 and 2, he will dwell in the cloud between the wings of the cherubims, see? And it said the cloud covered the tabernacle and the glory of Yahweh filled it. That was the same way with the temple. When it was dedicated, it said the cloud covered it and the glory filled the temple, see? And when Yahshua Messiah transfigured, with, uh, it said a bright cloud overshadowed him. You understand? So uh, when he died, buried, resurrected, now the elementary charge. When he died, we've run this before, but I, I just doing it quick because I got I want to try to finish this. 
He died, buried, resurrected, and he ascended on a cloud. See that ascension there? It's on there. And then he died, buried, resurrected, ascended. Then 10 days later, poured out the Holy Spirit. Now you see him sitting on the throne. See him sitting on a cloud there. And you see a crown on top of his head. And you right. see how it's got heaven over there? See, he opened up heaven through his death, burial, resurrection, ascension. And then he poured out the Holy Spirit. That's him sitting on a cloud, a crown on his head. You understand? He's got a scepter in his hand, but here in Revelation says he's got a sickle there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you see how it's all the way across there? Uh, that he's that's the that's Joshua the Messiah. See, heaven's all the way across. Showing that he's opened up heaven and you can receive the Holy Spirit and be in heaven right now. So that's a, and, and your brain, your brain is gray and white matter like unto a cloud. See, So he said he saw the son of man sitting on a cloud and he had a golden crown and had a sickle in his hand. Uh, uh, keep read the next verse. Verse 15. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Yeah, the harvest of the earth is ripe. Now, uh, okay, now in Leviticus 23, you have seven feast days, okay? Uh, Moses chart. Then you'll find out that the first three feast days, uh, the first one started out down there in Egypt in Exodus 12 chapter with the Passover. He set up April's the first month of the year and the first and April 14th, the first feast day. That's also the same day Yahshua Messiah died was April the 14th or the first month, 14th day. It's likened it under our April. OK, that's the first feast day. April 15th was the second feast day. It's Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yahshua died on the 14th. He's the Passover, and, and, he's, and he's the true bread. He hadn't risen yet. He's buried in the tomb that day. That's showing he's fulfilling unleavened bread. April 16th is the first feast day. That's when he resurrected on, on the 16th. He's the first fruits of them that slept. Okay. Then the fourth feast day was June 6th. That's when he poured out the Holy Spirit. Uh, and then the fifth feast day is October 1st, Feast of Trumpets. October 10th, the Day of Atonement, when he went into the most holy place. That's a feast day. And then October 15th through the 22nd, an eight-day feast there in um, uh, uh, the last feast is the seventh feast and it's the Feast of Tabernacles. All of those feasts are around the harvest time. Okay, April 16th, Feast of First Fruits, that's the barley harvest. June 6th, that's the wheat harvest. And then the, uh, the October feast, 15th or 22nd, is the, is the corn and the oil and the wine. And it all has feast days during the harvest time. Okay, now read uh, Deuteronomy. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy uh, 16 and 9. And so she's got a sickle there. You understand? And we're going to read that. Used for harvesting. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Deuteronomy 16 and 9. Seven, yes. week, seven weeks shall thou number unto thee. Begin to number the seven weeks. Dispensation from ages, Lenore. Please. Begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the grain. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto Yahweh thy Elohim with a tribute. Okay, 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 okay. Now you see where it said in 16 and 9, it says you're going to count seven. Begin weeks. to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the grain. The sickle to the grain. That, what you're doing is, they're gonna count from April 16th, or first month, 16th day, 
they're going to count seven Sabbaths, which is 49 days, and then add the next day, which is 50. That's how you get June 6th being the fourth feast day. So that's when they say put the sickle to the grain. That was the barley harvest. Well, what Yahshua Messiah is doing, uh, okay, when he died, buried, resurrected, when he resurrected, that barley harvest on April 16th is testifying that Yahshua is going to resurrect 4,033 years of souls. That's when he harvested the first fruits or the souls of mankind. They were the first fruits that resurrected with him after his resurrection. Okay. Then the 50 days from that resurrection is when he pours out the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, June 6th. And that's when those souls that are living on the earth were harvested or received the Holy Spirit. And now they're being reaped on the, on the earth. You understand? And those were called first fruits too back there in the law in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, when he poured out the Holy Spirit. See, okay. Uh, and then what's coming up, he's still harvesting souls in this age by the gospel being preached and your soul can be resurrected. See, now get that, or let's read it a little bit. Read Mark 13, well, let's do it this way. Yeah, Mark 13, 26. Read Mark 4, 26. Mark 13, 26. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Read. And he, then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Yeah, so he's going to gather uh, in the four winds, so the north, east, west, and south. That's the good news. See. Um, Read 13, I mean, 4 and 26. Mark 4 and 26. And he said, so is the kingdom of Yahweh, as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that, the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it in the sickle because the harvest is come. See, the harvest is come. Okay, read, uh, oh boy. Read uh, Matthew 9, 37. Well, no, read uh, Luke 10 and 1. Two, yes. Luke 10 and 1. Yeah. After these things, he appointed 70 others also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore to Elohim who directs the harvest that he would send forth labors into his harvest. So the harvest is right, but the labors are few. And there is, there's too many, not too many people want to work and try to preach the gospel to help somebody else out. Okay, get, uh, let's go back to Revelation there. I, I want to try to get to the end. Uh, read it to the end now. Uh, Revelation, whatever, and we'll get the other part to it. Revelation 14 and 15. And another no, now, no, we just got through the reef okay. in the 16. So it's 17 and come down. 17. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had a power over, which had power over fire and cried with a loud voice. Cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. 
And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it unto the great winepress of the wrath of Yahweh. And the winepress was trodden outside the city and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Okay, now read Joel 3.13. And then get the other one, get um, Matthew 13. And I'll just talk about the story and then we'll get it. Uh, you got Joel 3.13? Did you say Joel or Joel? Joel. Oh, okay. Joel. Okay, okay, okay. One second. Your second's uh, up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Okay. Um, here we go. Joel, Joel what? 313. Joel 313. Here we go. Um, put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come ye, come. But wait a minute. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come. Get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow for their wickedness is great. So their wickedness is great. So now this sickle, this harvest, is the ones that uh, are not being uh, obedient to Yahshua the Messiah. Uh, matter of fact, and you'll get that. When you go to Mark 13, I'll do it real quick. 1324, you had a man sow forth good seed. Then when they, when they, when they slept, the enemy came and sowed tares. Then the, uh, the tares come forth and the wheat come forth. They said, well, what should we pull up the tares? He said, no, let them grow together. And then when the time of the harvest, that's when we're going to separate. So when you read 13, uh, 36, read that of Matthew. Matthew 13, 36. Then Yahshua sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. It's Matthew 13, 36, Lenore. Go ahead. Keep reading. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed is the doctrine of the kingdom. But the tares are the doctrines of the wicked one. The enemy that soweth them is the adversary. The it's harvest the is the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. Yeah, the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. Read on. Verse 40, as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this age. The son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall it's gather. It's really out. the end of this world because the age he was in was the post-Diluvian age when he's saying it. See, that's why that holy name guy, he likes to change and makes mistakes doing that. Read 41. 41, the son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. <laughs> there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And that's eternal damnation. So you're either going to be uh, reaped and thrown into the lake of fire because you didn't receive Yahshua Messiah and the, uh, the Holy Spirit and your uh, uh, so you receive eternal damnation and it but then it says then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of the father who hath ears to hear let him hear and you also have that with uh, Matthew 25 and 31 when it says he's going to separate the sheep from the goats yeah. And they put the sheep on the right hand, the goats on the left. The sheep on the right hand in 25, 34, he says, come thou blessed, inherit the kingdom which was prepared before the foundation of the world. Then in 25, 41, it talks about those on the left hand, he's going to cast them into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. So, uh, or cast, they're going to be, uh, receive eternal damnation. Yeah. And so, um, and those uh, those uh, furlongs, one thousand six hundred four. That's one hundred and eighty miles. And if you do that, that'd be sixty plus sixty plus sixty. Those that receive the mark of the the uh, of the beast shall be cast into the lake of fire. So, uh, 
we finally finished 14. All praise go to Yahweh up to his son, Yahshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We had up to 55 attendees today. And after the uh, doxology, there will be a, an announcement from uh, Dr. Felicia Smith. Moderator. We thank everyone that came out to study with us today. We hold classes Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. in Malaysia, and 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. in London, England. We will now have a doxology, which is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say together, hallelujah. 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 Thank Praise you. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Joshua. Thank you, Joshua. Always. Praise okay, Joshua. Always. Praise Smith. Joshua. Good afternoon, brethren. Once again, I'm announcing the Panoramic Vision Symposium, Dallas, Texas, 2021, December 10th through the 12th. A lot of brethren are coming in on the 9th and are staying an additional day. The room rate is 129 per night. I have included the link. So that if you'll access the link that I just included in the chat, you're able to register there, you're able to book your room. There's information uh, for transportation uh, to and from the airport. Uh, anyone who is interested in singing in the mass choir, please let me know. I'm gonna include my phone number and my email address as well. If you're able to find the time and the finances to come, uh, we have 99 registrants already, and we still have over a month to go. So I thank all of you in advance. Peace and love in Yahshua. Hallelujah. 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 Thanks. I'm headed there. All right. Don't forget yeah. to turn your clocks back. Fall back tonight. Thank you, Jack. Yay. <laughs> So that's at the uh, except, for, except for Phoenix, Arizona. Oh yeah, except, yeah, except for the place that it's not. Yep, everybody doesn't do it. Well, welcome uh, back, uh, Kevin and Sally and Mike, Michael and Mandy and all the other newer people and everybody else. Praise Yahshua Messiah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Dr. Oh. Dr. Smith, uh, Felicia Smith put the uh, website for the da Dallas, Dallas, Texas seminar in the chat. And she okay. also put her email mm -hmm. and phone number. So, yeah. Holy Check shit. out the chat. Thank you. Okay. You see it on the screen also, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it said, I guess it was thepanoramicvision.com. I remember that was always simple to do. Yes, you can actually just, yes, you can just uh, put in your browser, www.thepanoramicvision.com, and it'll pull up the registration page as well. Okay, so Michael Aarons is going to be there. So everybody come and meet him, shake his hand, say hello. That's great. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Hope everyone right, has couple. a blessed day. <clears throat> All right. I'm just focused, uh, taking.